Happy How's Halloween. it going? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Do you want to give our audience a brief thumbnail sketch of who you are and what you do? Yeah, definitely. So my name is John Kiernan. And for those who probably get messages from me or for those who I work with in the industry, uh, the tagline is usually very similar. I am a wrestling entrance theme song composer from New Jersey. Um, up to now, I've written over a hundred themes for different wrestlers for different promotions. Um, I usually say everybody except for WWE, not to exclude them, but more it paints that picture of, you know, that's the only company I haven't worked with. I've worked with uh, wrestlers from AE. W, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, uh, MLW, so all around the gamut and various independent promotions. So um, over the last two years, it's been quite a ride. And before that, I've been doing performances, releasing instrumental music, scoring films, uh, performing my own music. So a little bit of everything. But where I've been for the last couple of years has been in uh, wrestling themes almost exclusively now. Mm -hmm. That is excellent. And to provide a little bit of background for people who maybe aren't so familiar with the wrestling world, what, uh, so wrestling is very international. Uh, can you tell us a little bit of a, of a background about that and how many different wrestling uh, organizations, if that's the correct term, there are and, and which one you're working with? Yeah, definitely. So uh, from my side, I usually work directly with the talent. So I am the in-house composer for one called the United Wrestling Network, which under its umbrella has about four or five different divisions, such as championship wrestling from Memphis, from Hollywood, um, in different territories that they exist as championship wrestling from insert uh, city here, most notably and most recently, uh, championship wrestling from Atlanta. So in terms of how many there are, there's, oh man, there's, there's so many, like you said, it is an international, uh, it is an international phenomenon. Now you have promotions out in China, you have promotions here in the U.S., you have Japanese promotions. You have really, I, I don't know how many countries my music has been featured in, but I'll tell you that they've been featured in a fair amount. It wrestling is a big thing, especially overseas. Wrestling is a big thing here in the states, so. Yeah, it's it's also interesting because I think you're trying to kind of make up a, a little bit of a parallel between like, like, for example, soccer, right, where it's kind of like you have the World Cup and everybody kind of falls under this thing. Um, all the different all the different wrestling promotions are kind of their own independent things. Wrestlers do go from place to place, but it's not so much in the uh, in the same way. It's more like they're independent contractors that can uh, go anywhere generally unless their contracts are tied to a specific promotion. But yeah, there's so much everywhere. And where I come in is when you see, and for those who might be familiar with combat sports like UFC, before the combatants hit the ring, you hear that piece of music that plays in the intro. That's usually something where my music plays. Um, and if they win, it plays again. So that's also cool. I love that. How long is a typical piece of music? And what's the, the process? What is the back and forth? Is there a lot of back and forth? Uh, yeah, give us a little insight into that. Yeah, and I'll always put it like this. Um, I always speak about my individual experience and mine may differ from a lot of people's because if you are a composer that is contracted to a specific organization, then the chain of command might change. Uh, gratefully, and I've kind of been speaking to different wrestlers and different people in the industry about this, I think I'm in a really good position because I get to work with talent, usually individually, even if it is me working with a UWN talent. Usually they come to me or uh, the boss comes to me and says, hey, we're looking for a theme for this wrestler. I get connected with the wrestler, ask them a couple of questions. Usually the main questions I ask are things like, uh, even if I know who the wrestler is, I'll say, what do you want the audience to know about you before you even hit the ring? Like if someone hears your music, what do you want people to feel about you? What do you want them to uh, get before they even see you? And then from there, sometimes they have different references that they're like, oh, I'd like the theme in, you know, this style, or this is something I think would help portray my character in a different way. So realistically, the process differs wrestler to wrestler. Uh, sometimes you'll hear me doing 
a fairly heavy track like I did for a wrestler named Masha Slamovich. It's very much like a testament meets arch enemy kind of feel. Um, there's and these are the two wrestlers that are in my head now because they just wrestled each other here in Jersey. Um, but then there's another wrestler named uh, Mercedes Martinez, who hers is more of a reggaeton style track. So, you know, it's two very different contrasting uh, styles, but it really is dependent on what the wrestler is looking for. So I have worked with organizations where they're like, listen, you're just going to kind of work with us and we want to, you know, control that narrative uh, for those who are in wrestling, wink, wink, control the narrative. Um, but for just in general, we often if you're working independently, get to work directly with the talent. If you're contracted to a specific organization, it could be either way. Uh, gratefully, most of mine has been directly with the talent. You mentioned that there's you kind of dig into a lot of different genres. Um, do you have a background interest in a lot of different genres or do you have to kind of learn things as you go and kind of adapt to people's requests and, and bring on some new skills? It's the combination of A and B. Um, throughout my life I've always I've always been the guy like I think we all have that friend who doesn't hate much you know like there is like a general consensus around a movie that everyone's like oh this movie sucks or like this isn't really something that anybody likes and the person's like they can find that redeeming quality in it that's me with music mostly and you would assume that you know for somebody who's so entrenched in music or someone who's gone to school for music there would be this level of elitism but I listened to basically i listen to basically all styles of music and i find an appreciation for them whether it's classical uh again metal jazz rock you know anything really out there and um my wife doesn't like it too much even though she's a uh, she has her masters in piano but i'm a big fan of like country music too so even just expanding out into something that especially here in new jersey people are just like that's ho-dunk like what are you doing um but when a wrestler comes to me and they ask me for something specific, while I might have already been a fan of that style and kind of known, OK, cool, these are things that, you know, make that up. It's an opportunity for me to sit down and go, OK, cool, like, let's dive really into this style. Um, the reggaeton stuff is probably the style where I have the least familiarity and kind of by choice over time, if I'm honest. Um, and that's probably the only style that I will say. I'm just like, ah, it's not really not really my thing. Um, but when Mercedes Martinez was showing me like, oh, this is what I was using before. This is what I really like. It's one of those things where you try to you try to find the things that really accentuate that style. OK, cool. It's very rhythmically based. Uh, there's a lot of groove to it. OK, cool. So we'll do that. Um, here's some of the instrumentation, things like that. So even if it's a style I haven't come in contact with there isn't i it's, it's something i tell wrestlers too there's really not a style that's outside of my wheelhouse and does that mean i've written in every style not necessarily but i have written in a lot um, but more so to the point of if you give me something i can make it happen if you give me references and you're giving me what the point of your character is supposed to be we're going to come up with something that you both love and something that uh, fits what you're looking for so it's kind of a long-winded answer but uh the short the tldr of it is love all styles of music and even if i haven't done it i can do it so awesome hey so if there's any wrestlers out there who are listening he can do it all <laughs> john can do it all he can make he can make it happen whatever style that you're looking for he's and he, he can make it happen <laughs> when you are a professional in music and I think you'll you'll echo this too in ways, right? When you talk about you have to be a professional, uh, whether it's a videographer, whether it's a composer, whatever the case is, you have to figure out in order to survive in the more creative side, how can you maximize all of the things that you do, right? So over time, it's like, okay, cool. I wanted to be an instrumental metal guitarist. Well, that's cool. And that's very much my parent style. Uh, like if I pick up a guitar, that's kind of the stuff that I play generally. But that isn't the only thing that you should be able to do if you're looking to create a career as a musician. Okay, cool. Now you need to branch into other styles. Now you need to look into other sources of income. Now you need to look into all of these different avenues that you might not have otherwise. So once you start kind of uh, branching off in one place then you know the seed is where the tree comes from so mm, very well said and very modest <laughs> very modest now <laughs> do um so when wrestlers uh approach you do you get um 
would you say it's largely those who this is their first um you know entrance theme song that they've worked with or are they sometimes coming to you where they've had other composers write something for them and they want to go in a different direction or totally reinvent themselves what kind of variety do you uh encounter in terms of your clients yeah it's uh column a column b column c um you know, with entrance themes, when you have a wrestler who's starting to really start branding themselves and take their character seriously, an entrance theme can be one of those things that helps it bring it to life, but it could be the start of their career, right? Um, I have worked with talents where they're just like, hey, I just got out of wrestling school. I want to start hitting the road. I want to start putting down my, uh, my promos and things like that. So I need something just bare basics. Here's what I've always thought for my character. I think what's interesting about those is you get a completely fresh perspective. Um, and you'll probably hear me refer to a few names back and forth because they're kind of on my head because they're either A, some of my favorites, or B, people that I'm grateful to have really grown a deep kinship with and really highlight what I'm talking about. Um, but when somebody initially starts their wrestling career, it's an opportunity for them to initially get that brand, right? And wrestlers change over time. They go to different territories. They decide, okay, this doesn't really suit what I want to do. I want to go in a different direction with my character. Um, if they go to a different promotion and all of a sudden it's like, hey, you're now not this character. You're now trying to fit within this stable, like this group of people or whatnot. Um, you end up having reasons where they'll switch. Um, a lot of the talent that I've worked with recently has been talent that's been around gratefully for whether it's 10 plus years or even seven plus years, but a significant amount of time maybe has been on TV or has been in the public eye for quite some time. So with those wrestlers, a lot of the times they've had things that they've tried that they even still using sometimes that are either A, uh, copyright issues, obviously, or B, you know, they want to expand on that character. Um, there are some wrestlers that have come from the uh, from the big promotion from the uh, WWE, where that's kind of one of those things. And again, no digs on anyone that writes for WWE, but you know, you're talking about a company that says it ha it's a publicly traded company and they're trying to churn things out fairly quickly. So it's like, okay, cool, bullet point. Here's what this is, go. And then you got to stick with that theme for a little bit of time. So sometimes wrestlers coming from there that I work with going out to, you know, AEW or Huffington on the Indies, they'll say, you know what, this is what I used here and I like that vibe, let's stick with it. Or, you know what, I want to, like you said, rebrand myself. Um, there's a wrestler who just debuted on AEW named Tony Nese. He was the ex-cruiserweight champion in WWE. He won the title at WrestleMania. And his whole thing is that he's both a fast high flyer wrestler and a strong wrestler. His whole tagline is, uh, oh my God, I'm going to lose it. Cause I don't, cause I don't say it every week. He does um, move like a cruiserweight hit like a heavyweight. That's what it is. And so with him, when you hear his, theme that he was using in WWE, it's very fast. It's uplifting. You know, it's one of these things where you would hear it and you'd want to cheer for the person. It sounds almost like, uh, like kind of like a superhero theme in a way, like a uh, very, uh, when you hear it, you would know, I can't even remember what the name of that theme is, but it's the most recent one he used in WWE. Um, when he came off and, you know, we started working together, he wanted something that was a little bit more in your face, a little bit more driving, right? So it was a little bit more, it was a little bit slower a little bit more methodical and it focused instead of it just being okay cool here's this guy who can fly around it focused more on his nickname which is the premier athlete he goes in the ring he poses he does all of these really cool strong moves that look flashy and um you know he puts them away so it was a really good opportunity for him to say you know what here's what i did like from that but let's go ahead and make it more uh, in this style i think that's going to help me speak more in the ring so it's a combination so people start bare basics um this girl masha slamovich who i brought up a couple minutes ago i actually with her she was actually the fourth theme that i ever wrote a couple years ago and you know we've grown to be friends over the course of time and she's just hoofed it from everywhere from japan back to the us here in jersey uh, she recently got signed to impact wrestling on axis and the theme that we did originally for her is at first was kind of like a seven dusty russian 
Tchaikovsky inspired theme where it was like, okay, she's really trying to push this narrative. So we had strings, we had all this stuff. And um, she goes, yeah, when I come back to the States, I don't want that. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, um, let's talk. We wanted to work together. I was like, all right, so what do you want now? And she's basically just like, I drive people on their heads and I'm out to kill people. I'm like, all right, cool. So here's what we got to do. Complete 180 from that. And, um, you know, now when you see here on Impact and you hear The Art of Violence, which is the new theme, and you listen to uh, Russian Dynamite, which is the original, you kind of see the progression from here was somebody who was trying to find themselves. And here's the person that knows who they are now. So mm. it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a big progression. Yeah. Oh, that's really fascinating. Do um, So when people approach you, when wrestlers approach you, they already have kind of a, a pretty good sense of who they are, who they want to be. Do you ever get somebody who comes in who's like, I'm not really sure where I'm, I'm going next? And you kind of have to talk with them and, and really dig deep to figure out what, what they want to be aiming for? Or do they usually have a pretty good idea kind of locked in? It's less so that they don't know who they are and where they're going, but it's more so that they don't have, and again, I, I mean no disrespect when I say this, I think it's just probably the most direct way. They don't have a defined character that reaches outside of I'm a wrestler, right? Um, and to use some kind of timely examples, right? You say, or some, uh, some evergreen examples, we think of someone like The Undertaker, right? The Undertaker was around for about 40 years or so. His whole gimmick was that, at least until like uh, 2000 something, he was the dead man. That was his whole thing. He was supposed to be a dead guy. Okay, cool. That's a very defined character. You're not going to write an ice cream song for him, right? You're not going to write like an indie style song. You're probably going to write a funeral dirge, which is what lasted over 40 years. Um, but then you have someone like, for example, uh, Brian Danielson now, who's in AEW. His themes have always been great and they've always nailed them, but they basically took Flight of the Valkyries and made rock versions of them and modernized versions. Um, Daniel Bryan's story was always like, he's like the best wrestler. Okay, well, what do you do with that? What do you highlight? There's got to be a little nugget somewhere else in the character that you can pull from. And um, a while back, I had actually spoken to Jim Johnston. For those who are familiar, Jim Johnston was the composer for 32 years for WWE. And I just shot him a message one day on LinkedIn. And I was like, this guy's not going to answer. I'm just some like some schmuck, you know, and he ended up responding and we had a little bit of a back and forth, which was cool. Um, and I got to him on that. I was like, listen, you're talking about it's easy to write themes for like The Undertaker. But what if you have a wrestler who's just a wrestler or just a fighter or something like that? And he goes, there will always be something that you can connect to, even if it's something that everybody else has. There's something that does make them a little bit unique. So you have to continue to dive to that. Um, so, for example, like someone's like, OK, I'm an MMA fighter. Okay, great. Well, what else are we doing with that? Um, you could just stop there and be like, all right, cool. We're going to make a rock track. That's great. Um, but I think there's depth in saying, okay, cool. So when you are an MMA fighter, are you more submission based? Are you more strike based? Um, do you feel that you have a chip on your shoulder? You know, is this something where you had maybe lost a lot of fights and you all of a sudden came around the other side, you trained and now you're out to prove something. Like there's little things that you can kind of extrapolate from someone who's just like, I'm a wrestler. You're like, okay, cool. Let's get those extra nuggets and let's pull those out. Cause that's going to make not just the difference in the music that I write, but it's also going to help you even define more um, of what you're going for. So but I will say that a lot of wrestlers tend to have a pretty strong vision of what they're looking for, um, which is pretty cool. In some promotions, they have a little bit more freedom to that than others. But a lot of promotions now are giving wrestlers that freedom to be who they want to be and in turn to have the music that they want to have. In terms of your personal background, how did you find yourself in this in this world? Tell us a little bit about your background and how your journey and how this became uh, an idea as a, as a career path. Yeah, man. Uh, so there's, it's, it's a lot. Um, and it's one of those things like you never know what's going to happen. You never know where life will take you. And, you know, I've been a believer in both sides of that, like one door shuts, another one opens and kind of conversely, um, what's the other side of that coin? Oh yeah. You could be one step away or one move away from, you know, the next phase of your life. Right. 
I've been a professional musician on and off now for about 10 to 12 years or so. And I was actually running a wrestling podcast. I think you actually got me in contact with uh, Patricia. We're going to be speaking in a couple of weeks. She's, she's so cool. Her, everything that she and her team do for those wrestling girls is so dope. So total, totally plug, check them out too, please. Highlighting female wrestling, highlighting women's wrestling. So, uh, but we had, um, we had a podcast also some buddies and I called the armchair bookers and we were looking for different ways to maximize our visibility. Right. So we were just like, okay, cool. What skill sets do we have? Well, one guy was good at interviewing. Okay, cool. You go interview people. Right. Um, and for me, one of my buddies went, well, you write music. Have you ever thought about writing music for wrestlers? And when I was in college, the big thing I wanted to do was over time and through self-discovery, we start writing music for commercials and films and video games. And one thing that you find is especially in video games and films, it's more at the mercy of the project than it is at your own writing speed, right? So, you know, a film could get put into backlog, a game could get put into development hell, all those kinds of things. But wrestlers are some of the nicest people in the world, man. So, you know, everyone's just trying to work together generally. Um, everyone's trying to put themselves over, put each other over. So it's cool. Um, why do I bring that up? Because a couple of the interviews that we had uh, done with the Armchair Bookers podcast, we had become friends with a couple of different wrestlers that were local or on the way up. Uh, a gentleman named Ricky Gibson, who now works for UWN under the Midnight Heat, he was actually the first person that we interviewed and the first person I ended up doing a theme for. I was like, hey, I wanted to know, like, I don't know how to, I know how to write music, obviously. I know how to release it, but I have no idea how to even get into writing themes for people. Um, there's no like roadmap or anything for that. And he goes, oh yeah, you could go ahead and make one for us. And I don't think they were really expecting much because we were coming from the podcast perspective. And there was like, they heard the intro that I had written and it was kind of like a, uh, you know, like a mid 2000s, three days gracious, gracious kind of thing. It was cool. Uh, but you wouldn't think much of it. It's like 10 seconds of the beginning of a podcast. Um, and then I wrote this theme for them, which was kind of like this 80s inspired theme. And they were like, oh my God, this is really cool. And so we started talking again, like, how do you do this? Oh, well, basically what you're doing now, just start reaching out to people, talking to them. Um, I was like, is that really it? Like, I know there's like copyright, things like that. They're like, dude, the wrestling industry is so uh, still so up in the air and so independent that there's so many kind of floating ideas, so many floating laws, things like that. Um, so I kept doing that. I kept reaching out to different people we had interviewed. And Ricky Gibson and uh, Eddie Pearl to this day, I've continued to be friends with them. They've referred so many people to me over the course of time. Um, and I'm super grateful for them. Masha, same thing. And, um, you know, over the course of time, it just became that people started to, uh, to learn the name. There were referrals. I still do a lot of client outreach. And for anyone running a small business or a big business, it doesn't matter how big or small you are always continue to network, always continue to communicate. Not everything is referrals and you still got to put in a lot of legwork, even if it's 30, 40% of your business, still what you're doing, right? So, I mean, two years later, I'm sitting almost at over a hundred themes, you know, and I have probably about 20 in back stock now that I'm, a, that I'm working with. So it's a combination of referrals and, you know, reaching out, but, uh, you know, there were a lot of people that I never thought I'd even get to work with or that would even know the name. And it's just like, it's crazy to see now. So that's, that's kind of the long version of it, but yeah, it's, it's been really cool. So it kind of took the passion of like composing, which is my big love of, uh, of just being able to write and put music together and now finding that outlet for something that I enjoy from an entertainment side, which is pro wrestling. And it's a great, um, uh, a great story too, for anyone entering a new, uh, career, um, a new industry of just talking to people as, I found from the, the end, from the, the video production end of things and you know, some of the social media end of things that there's, um, yeah, there's no, no harm in asking that, you know, 99% of the people that you'll meet will want to be helpful or, you know, want to, you know, give you a shot. So that's really cool that you had someone uh, was like, hey, try this, you know, do this for us. And, and uh, then that's your, your moment to shine. So that's, uh, that's really cool. What, um, yeah. what did it feel like actually getting to, you know, watch TV or see and hear your theme perform? What was that experience like? It's been 
a very uh, what's the word it's been very humbling you know and I say that from a lot of places I say that from a place well, first off from like a production side right because I've always considered myself more of a composer not even just a guitarist not even a, not even like a producer or anything like that. I would consider myself a composer um, I love the creation of music I love being able to literally take a in even our case not even a blank page right I love being able to just take like a blank landscape audio whatever and all of a sudden wow now it speaks to somebody right being able to hear it live it's a very different it's a very humbling experience. And when you hear your music, when you hear that other people are resonating with your music, it's really humbling because you're just like, or I'm just like, hey, I'm just in my studio writing music for wrestlers, right? And it's really cool because I get to work with them. But then when all of a sudden you hear that person go live and you see that the that the music that you have is the first thing that resonates with the audience. If the audience is, and they'll say this about wrestling too, it doesn't matter if they're cheering, if they're telling you to go away, it doesn't matter if they're booing you. If they're quiet and they're dead, then that's when you know that you're not being effective, right? And there have been a couple of different instances um, where a wrestler has come to the ring and it was like the first thing the crowd gets up they get really happy sad and different whatever the case they get really animated and the first thing they hear is for example the premier athlete theme tony nieces or the first thing he heard was danny jordan's theme when they were using it for aew or uh darren young's in new japan and it's just really cool to see that the music takes on a life of its own because the wrestler is so in tune with what they're doing and in tune with that so it's humbling from that perspective. Um, the other side of it that's humbling too is I always tell, because my wife and I run a music school here in uh, Midland Park called the Piano Workshop at Bergen County. And I always tell my students too, I go, we all start wanting to be a professional musician or let me even scale that back. We all want to pick up an instrument because we see our favorite musician on stage whether that's a taylor swift whether that's a machine gun kelly for me when i was younger that was blink 182 um and just a lot of people right even if it's britney spears back then um for me being able to come back around all these years later and be like okay this is where we've come um all this hard work all the blood sweat and tears so to speak that you you know, put in, you're all of a sudden able to see the fruits of your labor, so to speak, come to fruition in that way. So it's like, it's humbling to be like, okay, cool, we actually took something that we had a passion for. And now here we are with it, whatever it is, I was 13, let's say when I realistically started really getting into music, I'm 33 now as of this interview. And I think that you know, that humbles 13 year old me. I'm like, that's crazy. I was sitting in my bedroom in Key West, literally jamming on guitar being like, oh, it had an MXPX sticker and a Yamaha sticker. And uh, this guitar was like 20 bucks given to me by my brother. And then all of a sudden we're here. Um, and it, yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So it's, it's super humbling all the time. Have you found that um, that social media and Instagram in particular has made it uh, easier to connect? uh with uh, wrestlers potential clients uh and network the majority of my business is done through social media i will say um and the thing i will kind of talk a little bit about too is i think with a lot of what happens on social media we see a lot of crazy stuff happen on social media right um and i think we see a lot of negativity that happens on social media gratefully and knock on wood my instagram my twitter my youtube and my facebook I've always had generally positive experiences. And, uh, you know, you'll get the, uh, the people every now and again who have their opinions. I don't mind about opinions. I mind if you're being a jerk about it, you know. But very few and far between have I run into somebody who has genuinely been like, I'm just a bad day every day, which has been really cool for me from like the personal side. I think wrestlers use social media so much to connect with people. It's also the way that their name gets around so much. Uh, someone does a cool move, has a cool match. They end up being able to connect that and get it shared. Um, I feel like that that's been a really big way for me to connect with people is through uh, DMs, through Instagram, through probably Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook have been the biggest three. Um, I have my YouTube, which is always up. I'm always updating it with new music. And I have a playlist that I put through, like, hey, here are the themes that I've worked on. Um, 
but yeah, I think that if, if social media wasn't around, it would be much more difficult for me to grow my business, both from a referral standpoint and a uh, communication side. I always try to be as personal as I can with the wrestlers that I reach out to and vice versa. Meaning that, you know, I've seen people online that are just like, oh, I just sent an email plus to 10,000 people, uh, legitimately like 10,000 and 10 people responded. What's going on? I'm like, well, you know, my thing is I'd rather get, you know, a 64th of the work, but know that the person that I'm working with and I really do connect. Um, you know, I try to find out about as much of the industry as possible. I try to find out as much about a wrestler that I want to reach out to as possible. Um, you know, that way when I do send a message or I do reach out on Twitter, it's not just, hey, I write music, hire me. It's more like, hey, here's what I know about you. Here's what I really appreciate about what you do. I want to offer my services. And it's also not like a tongue in cheeky, like, hey, you're great. By the way, I do this. Maybe we could work together. No, I'm just kidding. But maybe, I don't know, none of that, none of that stuff. Cause that's just like, that's bollocks. That doesn't get you anywhere. That just makes you look like a hack. It's legitimately, here's what I like about what you do. Here are my services. I'd love to work with you. Let's see if we can make something happen. And usually people resonate with that. So um, yeah, the, the long and short social media is definitely helpful. And I very much figured that there's been a tact to how you do it, but it's just the tact on how you'd speak to people in general, you know, and people really resonate with that. Mm, excellent advice for any industry, right? Really want to be personable. Like, uh, you mentioned the, it's easier now to mass mass email or mass message people, but right. That extra little personal something that shows oh i actually took the time to look and see what you're about and what you've done that uh, uh that really goes a long way i think every business person whether they're in a big company or a small company can look at it the same way and there are tools like you said that do mass messaging or mass emails but the biggest thing i found is again if you're going to reach out to somebody the way usually to get that communication back is to know who you're reaching out to um there are definitely tools out there where it's just like hi insert tag here and then you can have the person's name and you pray to god that they didn't put in their last name and their first name in the same thing because it's totally not personable to say hi john kiernan comma nobody says that um they just use the first name sometimes wrestlers will have different accounts some for personal some for um their stage stuff right so i always try to be respectful and go to their stage stuff too and when i work with wrestlers there are some that i refer to them by their kayfabe names there are some that i refer to them by their real names it's always for me preference um there's one girl this one person lilith Grimm, who i've worked with um we did a theme that was very tribal very much like a high lung style and we were able to get the hurdy-gurdy player from the band eluvedi to play on it too it was really wild really cool um i still call her lilith to this day because that's what she prefers her real name is out there she has a pro profile all that but i still refer to her as lilith because that's you know, that's what they want. Um, other wrestlers don't care, but you always want to be respectful to that too, you know? Um, so I think the more you can learn about somebody, the more you really try to connect with somebody, the the more social media can work for you to help you grow. I'd say it's it's still very rare to find. Maybe now it's changing a little more because uh, now there are more tools readily available, but to have both the... Um, the creativity of an artist, but also have a business mind is something that not everybody has to, to have those two worlds, um, to figure out how those two worlds work. So um, where you are very unique is that you do have the, the mind of a business owner and someone who knows how to grow their brand and how to just looking at your Instagram page. It's not just a whole bunch of random stuff. It's there's a, a you know, some thought process to what's being posted and how it looks and especially um, with your podcast as well in terms of branding and, and really some thought that goes into that and not just a, kind of a random uh, smattering of things. So, uh, so even if you are, um, you know, someone who just enjoys, it, say, you know, playing the guitar for fun, there are definitely some things from uh, that businesses do that you could look at as a model. And even if it's something that, you know, um, that it's not your full-time job, you know, maybe playing a, playing an instrument, you just do it for fun. It's definitely important to look at what businesses are doing. It doesn't hurt. 
to see because uh, that can only increase your exposure. So there's always something to learn, you know, if you're just willing to listen to <laughs> listen and apply. But absolutely. Yeah. I've also been grateful, I think, over my life, whether it's been in or out of music to work under people who were very strong leaders, you know, whether that was my time at previous places like Apple or, you know, even working or even just talking to people like Winifred Phillips who's a video game composer and really kind of sitting under just listening to what they do and how they communicate and really the respect that they put down, you know, um, it's really interesting. And I think each wrestler is their own individual business. And you end up seeing that there are wrestlers who really take that brand seriously. And there are others that kind of sit in the middle and there are others that are like, okay, cool. Well, what work will come to me will come. Like they don't have much on social media. Their email is difficult to communicate with. Um, but it's really interesting to see that, you know, just with a little bit of like tailoring and a little bit of tooling, you end up being able to connect with, you know, way more people. Like one thing, like you said on Instagram, one thing I try to do pretty frequently is, and I'm, I'm pretty consistent with it, but every day I'll post a story of one of the pieces of music that I've written for a wrestler. I'll tag the wrestler and, you know, it gives them traction. It gives me traction. It also gives people the ability to go right to uh, listening to it, to subscribe, to follow things like that. Um, at least once a week, I usually get one referral from doing things like that because again, like wrestlers are following me. I'm following wrestlers. The industry is kind of like that Ouroboros of learning about what's out there. Right. So from things like that, you may get a connection here and there. It's not about seeing someone like a Kardashian and I'm not bashing them either. It's not like seeing a Kardashian who has 230 million followers and go, that's my, that's my goal. The point is you need to know your market. You need to know what you're trying to accomplish and even getting your stuff sometimes in front of 10 people. If it's the right 10 people, then that's fine. You know, you're able to grow. And I think that's been a really big thing for me is, um, you know, there are some wrestlers that I haven't heard of until they reach out or I reach out. There are some wrestlers that all of a sudden reach out and I look at my DMs and I'm like, why are you reaching out to me? Like, I'm, I'm nothing. Like, what are you, what are you doing? And, uh, it, you know, it's cool. It's all through the same channels. Um, so I'm always really grateful for that, but I always think that people can do even more. And I also think that there's going to be competition no matter what. Some people like don't give away your secrets. Um, listen, in any industry, there's going to be competition. If someone is successful in an industry, then they're going to duplicate and replicate. So the competition is going to exist whether you want it to or not. So it's better to create an industry than it is to just live on an island on your own. You know what I mean? Right. There might be someone else who does what you do, but it's your relationship that you've built and your, you know, which is also, of course, tied to your, your quality of work. But there's a gentleman who works for AEW who's their main go-to, their main go-to composer. They, he is the guy. His name's Mikey Ruckus. And um, when AEW started, he's the guy who has written all the music. He's the go-to. He's the composer for the company. And, you know, when I was doing the podcast, I got the opportunity to interview him. And it was cool because we'd interviewed so many different wrestlers, but you know, we, I'd gotten the opportunity to sit down with somebody in wrestling that was also a musician. So it was like, instead of just asking about like, oh, okay, cool. Like what matches are you looking forward to? It's like, okay, cool. What's your rig? You're using a seven string. That's awesome. What would you think of this and this? And it was really cool. Um, and over time, I might've said this on, and I might, I, I tend to tell this story a lot, but it's kind of expanded now. Um, one of the first times I ever saw my music on a large promotion was in AEW because when they were starting up this show called Dark, which is where they bring in some other talents, it's a YouTube exclusive show. Um, they were able to ask other people, hey, do you have music that you can submit for us to use? You know, and I don't know how public they made that there wasn't like a website. But I remember I was sitting working one day and he's just like, listen, do you have any music you can send it to me? Like anything just randomly uh, that we might be able to use. And I go, yeah, when do you need it? And he's like, five minutes from now. I'm like, legitimately five? He's like, yeah. He's like, I can send you the releases. I'm like, I'll send it to you in three. Like, I just happen to be at my computer now. That's cool. Um, and he didn't have to do that. And all of a sudden it became the theme that uh, Danny Jordan used for 
probably a couple of months while they were using music for the enhancement talent. And, um, you know, that was a song I wrote back in 2011 that I had released on a record and things like that. So it was cool. Why do I say those connections, right? I think Mikey's always been gracious with me in terms of just like, you know, both being a friend and giving advice in the industry. And even with that, uh, with Tony Nese's theme, Tony Nese was, um, I'll say it like this. He came to me to write a theme because I guess there might have been somebody else who was working on something for him before time. And, you know, maybe the guy didn't answer his messages, things like that. Um, and so Tony Nice came to me, worked on something. He ended up loving it, which I'm always proud of. He didn't tell me he was going to AEW. I don't think he knew he was going to AEW. And when I say going to AEW, wrestlers often will work in different promotions. AEW is one of those promotions where once you're assigned to them, it's a little bit more exclusive. Like you're usually going to work exclusively for their programming. Um, so we finish up the theme. He does a couple of different shows, one actually for UWN. And then all of a sudden he goes, hey, I'm going to AEW to work on the program Dark. And one thing about Dark is that they don't use music for the enhancement talent now. Uh, it's just quicker for them to get the people in the ring. Enhancement talent refers to people who aren't, uh, let's say, signed to the company or just there to make the onboard talent uh, shine, right? So I go, yeah, no problem. I'll go ahead and I'll obviously give you the music, give you the release. Um, I'll speak to my guy, Mikey Ruckus over there. He knows me and he knows how I work. I sent over the music to Mikey Ruckus and he goes, yeah, he's going to be on Dark. I don't know what they're going to do with him. What that means to me is they're not going to use his music uh, for Dark, obviously. I go, okay, cool. Makes sense. Um, I kind of knew that going into it. All of a sudden I'm watching Dynamite, which is their TNT show, and Tony Nese is sitting in the crowd no music but he's sitting in the crowd i'm like that's weird for a dark person and he goes yeah they told me like 10 minutes before time just go sit in the crowd i go okay so i reach out to mikey again i go so what's going on he goes oh yeah they're gonna they're gonna allow him to make an entrance on dark i'm like okay cool can you tell me anything no okay cool nda suite um they start using his music there and he goes it's really up to Tony Khan, if they want him to continue to use the music, he's like, I like it. It's cool. And then all of a sudden, fast forward, and now he's using it on Dynamite. Tony Nice is signed to AEW officially now. Uh, Mazel Tov and congratulations to him. He deserves it uh, so, so much. But it's one of those things, like, you don't know where connections and how connections are going to go. And it's one of those things where I'm always grateful to you know, have someone that dedicates that time even to just speak from a friend basis, but to even continue that uh, that connection that way. So, you know, it, it was something that I was like, oh, here's a piece of music that's going to be written for Tony Nese. Tony Nese is great. He's going to go around and do all this. And then all of a sudden he's on AEW. And I'm like, that's nuts. So, and Mikey is cool with using the music. So there yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah, you never know which way things are going to go. And who knows who and who's going to be connected with someone <laughs> at some point have um now have you actually gotten to go to uh to wrestling events and sit there and physically be there present while your music is playing something always comes up when you have a child and you have a job so unfortunately not yet um there might be a few things coming up that i will be going to and especially now in Jersey, there are so many different wrestling events that happen, whether it's, you know, South Jersey, whether it's up here in Bergen County, um, whether it's down by the shore, there's so much wrestling going on that, you know, I have to be able to get there one way or another. Um, so hopefully soon I'll be able to see it in person. The most that I've seen it is on TV. My son who's two and a half. I don't have him watch wrestling obviously right now. Um, when he gets older, cool. But you know, when all of a sudden I was like, oh, Tony is going to be on Dynamite. I'm like, watch the TV. This is crazy. So like he got to see that, but I haven't seen mine in person yet, um, but I am excited to one of these days. So it'll be cool. Yeah. We'll have to somehow schedule, <laughs> schedule all your clients <laughs> and, and schedule everything, schedule your life. So you have like a week off to just, you know, when it, <laughs> the way it lines up exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah exactly it's one of these things where it's like if you're the one that puts the kid to sleep then you have to hope the kid gets to sleep by the time that the show starts so you're like 
all right, cool. Please go to sleep. Please. But <laughs> please go to sleep a little bit earlier today. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll write some some sleeping music for you. Some Ex exactly. <laughs> some exit sleep music. <laughs> <laughs> some some sleeping entrance music. There you go. Yeah, yes. there we go. Sleeping some dreaming entrance music. Entrance music. <laughs> Hey, that's that could be an entirely new market that you could tap into. There's, oh yeah, definitely. It's a That'd big market there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of kids that need to go to sleep. <laughs> right. The next big thing. <laughs> we'll we'll get you on Shark Tank somehow. <laughs> oh so, man! In front of Kevin O'Leary, absolutely. Hey. You're like, yeah, I work with wrestlers right now, but have you ever worked with babies? And they're like, please, please make this quick. I don't know where this is going. It might be the most watched episode yet. <laughs> <laughs> babies, I'm intrigued. Yes. Wrestling, wrestling theme entrance and entrance theme songs and baby sleeping music. Hey, <laughs> it, it's an untapped market, but that might, we might be onto something here. I don't know. <laughs> it's all there. It's all there. And I will, I will say, I, we're joking about the, uh, you know, the baby music now, but even through wrestling, uh, I've been grateful to get other work too. Some, you know, light film work here and there for a short horror movie. Um, I've done different podcast introductions to one thing that I'm also grateful for is that wrestling themes, I'm probably writing, you know, three or four entrances a, a week. If on a good week, one or two, if it's, you know, I have a little bit more time, but in general, it's still so many different styles that if, a wrestler says, hey, I need something in this style. I could send them a piece of music that I've written in style A, B, or C. But even a podcast now, like there was a podcast I recently did where it was all about like women in business. And they were like, do you have something that's a little bit more like technology focused, but has a little bit more of an upbeat nature? I was like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I sent them a, uh, one of the tracks that I'd done and I got to work on a podcast intro there. Someone was looking for a synthwave track for a gaming channel. I was able to do something there. So it was. it's also the wrestling themes. I'm writing them at such a ferocious pace in so many different styles that it's giving me, I guess what you would say is a reel of, okay, here's all of this content. And it sounds wacky to say that in two years, it's been over a hundred themes in so many styles, but that's kind of the life as a professional uh, I almost said magician. That's the life of a professional musician. I've been able to say, oh, I'd love to be part of this project or whatnot. Here's a collection of music that I've written. So you know that I can write in a variety of styles. So that's the other part I've been really, really grateful for. Do you have anything coming up that we should that we should know about? Any big projects that you're excited about? I'm sure there's some things you can't totally reveal, but uh, things in the work that works that you can tease us about and we can follow up with you later. <laughs> I'm writing anywhere from three to four themes a week. On a good week, it's three to four. Sometimes it's one, to, sometimes it's two to three, um, but there's always so much music. I also, I won't say I do like these crazy break the budget videos, but I'll always do audio visualizers for my, uh, for my music. If a music video can be done, cool. But I'm always doing that. I have an artist that I work with who's phenomenal for the majority of themes that I put out. His name's Hiban uh, Huerta. He's out in California. He works with NWA. He does a lot of great stuff. Marina Shafir is a wrestler who just wrestled on AEW Dark. And I just finished up a theme for her, which is very different than what you would assume for... For those who know Marina Shafir, who's kind of like, again, an MMA fighter background. Um, it's not rock. It's not metal. It is classical, which is crazy. And when she told me why, I was like, this totally works. Let's do it. I'm here for it. Um, we'll write something like romantic style, like a romantic period. Um, so that's coming. Yeah, I'm backstocked on about 20 themes right now to release. And I'm backstocked on probably about 20 themes that I even have to start. So there's always there's always something coming. There is a wrestler named Jay Sose that I worked with recently. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be releasing his track, which featured Josiah Williams on it. Uh, Josiah Williams was uh, the backstage vocalist for WWE NXT. Uh, great guy and phenomenal rapper. So that one should be coming out sooner and later also. Um, lots, of, lots of stuff. I will say there's lots of stuff surprisingly that's planned for 2022 but just follow me on all the things follow me on facebook instagram spotify follow me on youtube follow me all the places because sometimes i end up releasing things without a release plan 
and that's the worst thing after we just started talking for like 20 minutes about independent business ship but that's where we are sometimes um but there will always be something cool in the pipeline is what i'll say what's the best way to, for people to reach out to you so i know do you have a, one particular platform over another that you seem to to check more i think instagram and facebook have probably been the two that are the easiest to check and communicate um so instagram and facebook follow the same handle at john kiernan music i'm on twitter also but it is the uh, the black sheep it's at j kiernan guitar because character limits john kiernan music at gmail.com is also where i am fairly communicative also via email so instagram first i would say email second facebook third or whatever i check all of them fairly consistently so and then uh, johnkiernanmusic.com is updated fairly frequently too.